Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. Thank you so much, Em, for coming back on the show so that we could spend some more time talking and getting into some of the things that you didn't have a chance to to cover because there's so much to talk about and you have so many great insights uh, and there's so much to share. And we want to be able to kind of go back in time, talk a little bit more about your life earlier on and your healing since coming out of this group. So for those who didn't get to hear your introduction last time, can you take a sec and spend a moment or two just introducing yourself? I'm Anne Thomas, and I am a survivor of a group called The Way International, uh, founded by Dr. Victor Paul Werewolf, and then taken over by Craig Martindale, who was in leadership for the duration of my childhood, who was, in fact, a pretty scary guy. He got really, really unhinged uh, during my time in The Way. So after living through that for 15 years, we were Mark and Avoid, which is excommunicated. And the whole world dropped out from under us. But what I didn't know at the time is that that very well uh, might have saved my life in a lot of ways. And I was able to find healing and move on into living a very authentic life. I am out and proud. I've been married for many years. I love my wife. Uh, I'm a business owner. I'm a homeowner. Um, I have a wonderful found family. And, you know, I'm really excited to be telling this story, especially here on the tail end of Pride Month, which I know this is going to come out after Pride, but Pride never stops. My life is lived in direct opposition and defiance of how I was raised. So I'm really excited to talk about both the scary things and also the great things that came along with healing. I am so happy to talk to you. And I love this idea of you living in defiance of how you were raised. And I agree with you. I think it should be Pride Month every month. It's like Black History Month. Like, I think we can actually care about that and learn about that all the time. But still, it's nice that there is at least some focus given uh, where it is needed and hope that it educates the public to care. Um, But in the meantime, uh, I would love to hear more about Craig Martindale because I think once we start doing more of your chronology. I'm not going to want to interrupt the flow of that because it's it's always so interesting to me to see how things build on other things and cause other things to happen or you to react a certain way based on what's happened in the past. So I know that does have a nice sort of confluence to it. it let's start then with talking about Craig Martindale as this really powerful figure in your life and yeah, and how so much of being in the way got in the way. And here are some of the major players that caused that to happen. Craig Martindale was in Way Corps leadership. And again, the Way Corps is leadership training within the Way International. And so he was president of the Way Corps and was responsible for training all of these Way Corps leaders, um, the folks that would become fellowship leaders, branch leaders, that would be ambassadors. And he ingratiated himself uh, with Dr. Werewolf. And as Dr. Werewolf was aging, he promoted Craig into the presidential role, into taking over for him. Dr. Werewolf died in 1985, which is the year I was born. And by 1986, uh, things were really going downhill. Craig had really started to take things on a path that supposedly Dr. Werewolf didn't intend. And at one point, there was another leader within the organization who was seen as, prior to Dr. Werewolf's death, like equal with Craig Martindale. Um, And his name was Chris Greer. And he was in Britain. Um, He was in England. He was their president over there. And he came out and said that Craig was taking things in the wrong direction, and there was this big schism in the way. And so many people ended up leaving and following Chris because of how Craig Martindale responded. (laughs) And he responded both by just becoming 
a lot more, there was a lot more vitriol in his teachings. His Athletes of the Spirit program got really out of control and wild. I mean, the guy's running around on stage in spandex claiming that he is the strongest spiritual athlete and the only one capable of truly defeating the adversary. And, um, you know, it's on YouTube. I highly suggest watching it with the concept of laughing at it. At the time, as a child, it was absolutely terrifying. Now, looking back on it today, after a ton of therapy, I can kind of giggle about it. I mean, literally the guy who's like running our lives and the lives of tens of thousands of people is running around on a stage in spandex doing like karate chops and punches and holding women in the air and dancing. And it was ridiculous. But between (laughs) that and the vitriol that started coming out of his mouth, he also started responding to being questioned in a pretty, I want to use the word violent way and not physically violent, but certainly he said things that couldn't really be construed in another way. They were death threats. <laughs> um, but he wrote this series of letters to the Way Corps. Again, these people that he had trained up and that he used to be in charge of as the Way Corps leader. He's now the president of the organization. And he sent them first a letter demanding loyalty. And anybody who wasn't going to be loyal to him, they could leave. They were gone. And that was written in 1989. So just a couple of years after he fully took over. He then continued to send out these really lengthy letters about a variety of topics, including how to get out of debt, declaring open open season on folks who dared to murmur any dissent against him or his board of trustees. That was in June 1994. And then would come what really impacted me, which was his war declared on homosexuals. So he sent out a multi-page letter that is just disgusting, disgusting rambling about purging the way of homosexuality. And I read through it in preparation for all of this. And I have to say, like, it's horrible. I don't even know that I want to read some of it out loud here, which I was planning on doing. It's just really so disgusting. If there's a slur for... Uh, homosexuals, gay men, lesbians, it is in there. There's descriptive uh, sentences about acts of bestiality between women. I mean, it's just, it's gross. But one of the things that he said was, you should be thankful you're not in the Old Testament times because there are some of us who would gladly execute you. That's a direct quote from Craig Martindale. Craig Martindale. 